So let's talk about why people shrink as they age, especially women. Women actually shrink more than men. Uh, why is that and what can we do to prevent that? You don't want to wait until you're two to three inches or four inches shorter and try to reverse that. Uh, it's too late. Okay, so we want to act now. So a person potentially could lose uh, a quarter to a half an inch every decade after 40. So by the time they're 70 or 80, they're actually two or three inches shorter. Okay, why is that and what can we do to prevent that? We're getting a loss of the disc space between the vertebra and we're also getting a loss of the vertebra itself. So one of the big myths out there is that people think that they can grow bone by drinking more milk. Um, well, uh, cows and horses have these huge legs. They're solid. They, they're supporting a very large animal and they don't drink milk after six months. They actually are eating grass. So there is no credible study that I could find that shows that drinking milk will build your bones or make them stronger. Now, what about calcium? Well, there's a problem with calcium, especially when if postmenopausal women take calcium uh, to prevent bone loss, especially if it's calcium carbonate, they increase their risk of getting heart attacks. Uh, I did a separate video on that, you can check it out. But when we talk about minerals, we're only talking about one little piece of the puzzle. You need other minerals, you need vitamins, you especially need magnesium and this trace mineral called boron. Boron is really, really essential to help prevent osteopenia and osteoporosis. Okay, so you get your calcium, you can get that from leafy greens and maybe a little high quality organic grass fed dairy. Okay, number two, vitamin D3 and K2. These are fat soluble vitamins. These are really important in mobilizing and transporting not just calcium, but magnesium as well. So vitamin D helps the absorption of calcium from the small intestine by 20 times, but K2 drives that calcium from the blood into the bone. So vitamin K2, as compared to K1, triggers proteins that keep your bones really, really strong. Where do you get K2 from? Well, from fatty foods, which a lot of people are on low fat diets and they don't get enough K2. Vitamin D3, you get it from the sun, but of course, as you age, you don't get enough absorption through the skin. And you have to actually be in the sun for a certain amount of time and expose enough of your body to the sunlight to get what you really need from vitamin D3. So my recommendation is to take both of these as a supplement, especially if you're getting older and you just wanna make sure you're getting enough to avoid osteopenia, things like that. This is a big one, number three, low estrogen, okay? And I'm talking about women after menopause. So when you're low in estrogen, it's gonna be harder to build bone. You actually break bone down more than you're building it back up. Um, but this is usually coming because the adrenal glands, which are supposed to be backing up the ovaries during menopause, are not making enough estrogen. So you have the ovaries and the adrenal glands that make estrogen. Going into menopause, if your adrenals are too exhausted, as in adrenal fatigue, you get this situation where you get too much cortisol and not enough estrogen production, thus hot flashes and other problems. But cortisol, if too high, can create a catabolic effect and start breaking down bone. So that's one reason why someone might actually lose their height right there. And then number five, low protein. Um, they're not consuming enough high quality protein. You'd be surprised how many people have a deficiency of protein. And I'm talking about amino acids. At least 50% of most protein foods end up as waste. So when you consume protein, you have the quality of protein, where it comes from, and then you have the other factor of how many essential amino acids that are in there. You're supposed to have eight essential amino acids. If you're doing collagen, for example, you don't even get the eight essential amino acids. So if you don't have those essential amino acids, those building blocks, you cannot build body tissue. Same thing with branch amino acids. And then if you don't have enough stomach acid, that's another factor for not digesting. If you have gut issues, there's a lot of issues with this right here. I'll cover this in another video very soon. Let's say you're not exercising, okay? Exercise does help prevent bone loss um, because you're adding a stress and your body is compensating by making it stronger, the whole structural frame. Uh, number seven, growth hormone and also something called IGF number one. I wanna discuss that in this next slide. It's very, very important. Growth hormone. As you age, you lose your ability to make growth hormone. 
um, the pituitary makes growth hormone and it works through the liver and then it triggers this other hormone called IGF number one, which has very similar functions to growth hormone. So both of these decrease as you age. So if you're getting older and you don't have these hormones, you don't get the growth of the bone. Okay, so what can you do to maximize growth hormone? You can keep your insulin low and your sugars low. Hmm, that sounds like keto to me. Okay, next one, you wanna get more sleep, okay, and less stress. That will increase growth hormone as well. In fact, a good amount of the growth hormone is elevated while you're sleeping in the deep delta wave sleep. So if you're not sleeping, you're not gonna be able to produce enough growth hormone. And that's when all the repair happens, all the recovery uh, and the actual bone growth itself. Uh, exercise, high intensity interval training has the potential to increase growth hormone by 700%. But this is mainly if you're doing some hardcore sprinting. So if you're not doing hardcore sprinting, it could be less than that. And realize everyone's different and this was just one study. So it could be less, could be a little bit more. But high intensity interval training is the way to go, but do it gradually at first so you don't overdo it. Vitamin D, very important in increasing growth hormone, lots of sun, or take it as a supplement. But this right here is probably the most potent stimulator of growth hormone, and that's intermittent fasting. You can increase growth hormone by 1300 to 2000% when you do intermittent fasting. So again, uh, intermittent fasting will help you get younger, and I'm talking about your bones as well. So the moral of the story is don't wait until you're two to three to four inches shorter. Do something now as a preventative measure. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.